Graduating from Chicago Public Schools. I see. Fine. By the way, are you going to keep Barbara Bird Bennett if you're reelected? Well, first of all, the voters have to decide that. But as I said in the debate at the Sun Times, I think she's doing an excellent job because of her leadership is both having the experience of being a teacher, a principal, and an educator at first, and she's done a fabulous job. How do uh, I respond to? Just one minute. Okay. Thanks. When when you talk about education, when you close fifty school, if you just focus on strictly education. You got to focus also on crime. Okay. I lost a son, 20 years old, to drug, okay? If I send my kid two or three miles away from school, walking to the gang turk, I'm thinking about more of my kids' safety than education at that point in time, all right? They still got to learn more friends over in those particular areas. Did what the mayor did on this here, Ms. Mayor, you just can't think of just education. You got to think of when you come in my home, you take my kid out of my home, okay? And now we... You take them out of my home, and if I lose my kid, you, you cannot replace that. That's what I want you to understand, all right? That's what everybody should understand. When you lose a kid, then you'll think it ain't about education so much. They ain't walking two or three miles, okay? All the kids that get killed in Chicago. It, 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 it's about more than just education, all right? You do not well, disenfranchise. Can I address one point of that, if I can? Just real. How about if we share the time? Yeah, yeah, let's, go, let's go ahead. Bob, uh, well, you're ready. Um, I understand. You support an elected school board. Yes, yes I do. Uh, in a sense, would an elected school board be as accountable? It seems to me that when there's a group making a decision, accountability is a little dispersed. Why so, would an elected school board be more accountable than being able to point at one person and saying, you're the one who made well, that then, call? Why do we have a school board? I mean, you just said, you just said it. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, you know, nobody had to twist my arm to say I'm for an elected school board. I've been for one since I've come in the office since 07. At the same time, it, it will reflect the voices that are, are necessary. Our parents, our teachers, even our students will be heard through an elected school board. At the same time, when, when we talk Didn't about... Didn't you once oppose an elected school board? No. You never opposed an elected school no. board? No. Maybe I was confusing I mean, you with someone else. Excuse it me. must have been because I, I don't right. think. Uh, and then I think. Did you we, oppose we'll, an elected school board at one point? I've never opposed an elected school board. I voted against the bill in 1995 while in the Senate that gave absolute authority to the mayor to appoint the school board that even removed the city council from approving appointments of Chicago public school uh, appointees. Uh, that's my history, but I support an elected school board. We've been doing this now for almost 26 years, and it isn't working. We're the only school district in Illinois that doesn't have an elected school board. Schools are some of the, is, is one of the most important institutions that citizens should have a say-so over. That's why I support it. It ought to be elected. We ought to have accountability. If we had had an elected school board, we would not have had the massive school closures that made us a leader in this country. Mr. Garcia, uh, would you support rewarding good teachers with bonuses or higher pay than other teachers? I would support funding education equitably in Illinois and in Chicago. But how about for teachers who, who can, one can demonstrate are doing a particularly good job? Are they entitled to higher pay or bonuses? I think there ought to be incentives for outstanding teachers, but how you arrive at it, show me the formula by which that would Say happen. Say you could come up with a good formula. I would consider it. Uh, by the way, one of the, one of the ABC7 questions leaked <laughs> that was leaked and that we liked we're going to actually steal from them uh, and this is a question for you if elected is that another problem with plagiarism now? <laughs> <laughs> well not if you attribute <laughs> yeah, yeah. well that would be a fun I'm waiting for the question <laughs> Phil <laughs> if elected how could you represent the interests of taxpayers during contract negotiations for Chicago public school teachers you've been endorsed by the CTU much of your money is coming from the CTU and a national teachers union how could you do it Let's be clear that we aren't floating in money. There isn't money to you know, create a gravy train to give to anyone. The bottom line is that we're going to have to sit with the Chicago Teachers Union when I'm elected. We're going to bargain. How can you, how can you be an honest broker by with them? Being, they're the by ones... being transparent. They recruited Because you. by being transparent, they didn't recruit me. Karen they, Lewis, they, you said Karen Lewis recruited people, you. Karen Lewis invited me to consider. She challenged me. Many other people challenged me to do this. I think that my life's work has prepared me for this. But I would do it equitably. I would put all the cards on the table about the state of affairs as it relates to funding of schools in Chicago. There is nothing to be hidden there. There are going to be some really difficult choices to be made and medicine that probably everyone will not be happy with. That's the reality of the situation. 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, before the City Club of uh, Chicago this week, uh, Karen Lewis said that it would take more money to retain teachers and avert a strike. What was your reaction to that? Well, the fact is uh, our teachers are doing a tremendous job. They should take, and I believe they've done a tremendous job in making sure we have a full day of kindergarten for every child. We have a rising graduation rate, the best in the history of the city, best ACT scores ever, best attendance ever, and our kids in elementary levels are finally meeting and exceeding national standards in reading and math. They are doing a great job. What we need to make sure to meet our obligations is that the state no longer be dead last on education funding, and also the taxpayers of the city of Chicago should no longer be asked to pay two t teachers' pensions, one for Chicago and one for all the teachers downstate. That inequity has got to come to an end, and it's costing us in this city of Chicago about five to six hundred million dollars that could go into supporting our schools. Mayor, that's the big picture, but in terms of the immediate picture, yeah. is the city looking at the prospect, the very real prospect of another teacher strike? No, I don't believe so. As you, your first question was about working through issues, and as I showed you, every contract's been worked through without arbitration. We've done it by being respecting the people on the party, but making sure it's a win-win situation for the public as well as for the people uh, that do the hard work representing either police, fire, or teachers. Now let's segue to another topic, and that's crime. Mr. Garcia, you support 1,000 or more police officers, but you have been vague on how to pay for them. How would you pay for them? First of all, let us recall that we're spending $100 million on overtime presently because the mayor failed to honor his promise four years ago to hire 1,000 new cops. I believe that public safety he'll say he's, probably... He'll say that he, that I he believe, reassigned I believe, so that I believe more that public safety is one of the most important functions of government to be able to provide security for its people. If sure, we so can, how would you pay for it? That $100 million I would use. I would use a portion of that because another portion has to be left there in order to accommodate needs as they arise, events, unforeseen circumstances. But my commitment is to make it happen. You know, he argues that we cannot afford a 1,000 new cops on our streets. I say we cannot afford 10,000 shootings. We cannot afford 1,800 homicides of people, especially children that have died over the past four years under his watch. That's what I say we cannot afford. Well, quick response, Mayor. Well, this is, I apologize, Phil, it's a little longer than that, than quick. Because this is response, a response, Mayor. It's a very, no, but this is a very important subject. Too many kids in the city of Chicago have had the familiarity of gunfire, not the familiarity of laughter. We owe them their childhood that's being taken by violence. That's why I said cops cannot be behind desks. They've got to be back on the street, and we've moved them there. We've got to stop roving around and put community policing back in our police department. That's why we've dramatically increased our funding for after-school and summer jobs so every child has a safe place, a paycheck, and the values and a sense of responsibility that comes with it. But in addition, we are not going to stop this violence unless we strengthen our gun laws. Chicago now has the toughest ordinance in the country, every municipality, for, gu for fighting guns. But Springfield actually has to do the hard work of strengthening the gun penalties and the penalties associated with gun crimes so the flow of guns in the city are not undercutting the hard work of our police department and our community watch groups. Bob, you're ready. Uh, that, that is a subject that I think all... Excuse me. Right, there are excuse 387 me. less me. police officers on the rolls from the time that he took office. 387 less patrolmen and women on the streets of Chicago. How do you explain that? You know, there was a 40% well, okay, increase hold on, hold on. In, in homicides Real quick, is that an accurate in January no, full strength as compared to a year ago. Mm -hmm. is at full strength. All right, uh, Bob, you're ready. <laughs> Bob, you're ready. You know, the, uh, there is agreement that more needs to be done on guns. Give me one idea, new idea, to change that, to address the proliferation of guns. Well, I think one of the things, especially uh, what we've seen, the, the bill that was introduced in Springfield, too, that may, uh, enhances penalties and at the same time keeps uh, judicial uh, discretion there. Uh, I, I think we need to uh, be looking overall in, in background checks and who has them, especially some of these uh, uh, flow of guns from Indiana, what we need to do. When the mayor talks about... Uh, uh, you know, easing crime. We know we have a hundred million dollars, 117 million dollars in overtime. We know we have an underworked, uh, uh, or understaffed, overworked uh, police department that needs help. Uh, you know, we can cut some of this overtime, hire new people. But at the same time, we found that in the budget uh, two years ago to hire 500 more police officers. We presented that uh, amendment to the budget, and it got shot down in five minutes. At the same time, uh, you know, the, the administration talks about all kinds of things that they've done. They need to give the resources to the, the men and women on the street, help them fight crime, instead of worrying about 
press conferences that uh, exaggerate what they're doing and fudging the police statistics here. Let's uh, let's have another let, let's have another round of quick hits uh, for all the candidates real quickly. Uh, Chewy Garcia, when was the last time you used the CTA? Two weeks ago. Did the venture card work? Yes. All right. About two months ago, and yes, it did. Even though uh, on other occasions I've had it that it doesn't work. When was the last time you used the CTA and did the venture card work? Uh, Ten years. Ten years? Mayor, when was the last time you used the CTA? Tuesday and Monday. I take it twice a week to work. And did the venture card work? Always does. All right. Uh, do you give any money to panhandlers? Yes. Do you? No. No? No. Yes. Uh, name a book or movie or a piece of art that moves you. Uh, streetwise, though. Streetwise? I do buy streetwise. They're not panhandlers. They're, so uh, they're as entrepreneurs. As okay. All right, fine. But name a book, I movie, or a piece of art that moves you, Chewy Garcia. The Picasso. Which one? The one at the Daily Center. Oh, that one. Yes, right. the big one. Okay, good. Hard to miss. <laughs> Bob, you ready? Um, book, uh, movie, or piece of art that moves you? <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I've been reading the uh, speeches of Martin Luther King. Last night I read the one for, uh, that he gave at the end of Selma. I haven't seen the movie, but it, was, uh, it had a profound effect, and I'm going through again his work. Willie Wilson? The Bible. The Bible? Mayor? Uh, the uh, six to six million is a story of the Holocaust and the family's uh, elimination. Uh, should there be dogs in Maggie Daly Park, Willie Wilson? Dog went wild at my house when I was down south. <laughs> I take that as a no. <laughs> Bob, you're ready. Dogs and uh, Maggie Daly. Park. I think we just leave it there, man. <laughs> okay, good enough. <laughs> Not much more. Let's move on. I think. I, what, what would I tell my dog Mia when I get home? No. <laughs> The answer no. is yes. That's between you and your dog. Yeah. The answer is yes. There should have been a, a segment set up for a dog-friendly area there. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, Chicago Casino, yes or no? No. Yes. Definitely. Only under the right conditions. Uh, May Mayor, I had heard that uh, you'd done a, you'd done a, uh, you, you were having second thoughts because at one time, weren't you pushing for a Chicago Casino? No, I'm, I'm, it's, here's the thing. We brought our convention business back to we're now number one in creating 10,000 jobs in the hospitality. Originally, people thought that you only needed a, a, a casino to revitalize our tourism. We've done the hard work to actually grow our tourism industry, grow our convention business. We're in Chicago setting new records. Really on, that much. A, so you're saying you don't, right, need, you know, it. You don't need it? You don't need it like I, you thought no, you did? From only under the right conditions and, and, and only if the revenue goes to building new schools. Let's go to another topic. Bob Fioretti, why is Chicago still so segregated? I, I think uh, economic issues, schools, uh, especially when you close 50 schools in this city, you're turning your backs on those communities. And now who, who's going to suffer? The small businesses that were selling around those schools. It's a continuing ripple effect on all those 50 schools. And, and they're, they're black and they're brown communities. We haven't dedicated and don't, uh, the resources for them. We need to find ways to bring jobs into those communities, uh, have incubators for them, uh, tax-free zones to allow good okay, businesses. Okay, those are, those are solutions, but you've given me an answer. Why do you think Chicago is still so segregated? Uh, part of it is just the history and the segregated uh, patterns of housing. But that is changing very gradually. There is some diversification occurring. What I think would be the solution would be raising the minimum wage, engaging in more economic development uh, stimulus in the neighborhoods that have been left behind. Uh, and I think those would get us on the way to a diversification. And of course, also engaging and pioneering with mixed development communities uh, in Chicago, communities that are economically as well as ethnically uh, diverse throughout the city. All right, Willie Wilson, why do you think Chicago is still so segregated? Well. The reason why is economic um, empowerment, economic development, the jobs that go to minority uh, is not uh, done the right way. When you talk minority, you reach a number. You're talking about the white male, and you're talking about the white female numbers. It's, it's in those versus African American, Hispanic. And so those dollars are going in the wrong direction. It had to reflect equally proportional to Chicago land area. And when you take economic out of the neighborhood, it creates segregation.